Good day, my dear friends. Welcome back to Ease and Different Radiology. I am Dr. Osama Ibrahim, and today is our permanent number five in tips and hints. Today, I will talk about the MRI sequence as a revision for all MRI sequence, as you show in this slide. As usual, I started my presentations by questions. My questions today, all of these four images are fat separations which is referred by FS, meaning the fat suppressions MRI sequence. However, all of them are different MRI sequence. Which one of them is stair image? If you look closely for all the images, you can check the urinary bladder first, which is re representing a water in image. The water appearing bright in T2 sequence, and this also is slightly bright. However, this image only, the water appeared dark. So if you consider this is a urinary bladder and this is a water within it, T1 weighted image is the sequence which is showing the water is dark signal or low signal in MRI. So, Subcutaneous fat also appearing dark. So this is T1 fat suppression sequence. All of them have fat suppression, subcutaneous fats appearing dark. So it is representing all of them are fat suppression sequence. However, the first uh, number four here, uh, image number four is representing T1 due to the water appearing low signal in T1. T1 fat suppression sequence. However, if you look to this image, the urinary bladder showing intermediate signal. And this intermediate signal is not bright like this in T2, not dark like this in the T1. And also if you look at the muscle, this is the gluteus muscles and also the other muscles appeared brighter than the examined bones like this uh, iliac bones and also the examined fat. So there are fat separations and the muscle is the brighter uh, signal in the image. The muscle have uh, high concentrations of the protein, so this is uh, called the protein density image with fat separation. So the sequence here, number three, is protein density fat separations. So the remaining two images, number one and number two, which one is a stair from these two images? Both of them have high signal in the urinary bladder or water. Both of them have fat separations and also separations of the signals in the examined bones. So you need another helper here to differentiate the sequence. The MRI parameters which are written in the corner of image can helping you to differentiating between both. If you look here, there are TR meaning the time of repetitions, TE meaning the time of echo, and FA flip angle. As you know, stair imaging depending on the IR inversion recovery sequence and so you need time to inversion. Uh, there are no time of inversion here, only three parameters written in the corner. So this is representing the T2 fat suppression image. T2 fat suppression, T2 due to water appearing bright, and fat suppression due to the fat is suppressed. However, in this image, if you look closely to these parameters, you can find at least four parameters. Number uh, TR first, TE, and TI. TI here representing the time of inversion. So the time of inversion is representing inversion recovery sequence like a stair or flare. In this image, this is the stair image. So the answer of questions, which one is a stair is the answer is number two. This one is representing a stair image. Look, us to take a uh, uh, brief notes about the MRI sequence in the next slide. If you look for this MRI imaging, look at this two MRI imaging sagittal view for lumbosacral spine, you can easily discriminate T1 from T2. However, how can you easily discriminate this? 
In the T1, there are two types of tissue, fat, which appearing here in the subcutaneous regions, in the epidural spaces, and also in the bone marrow within the vertebral bodies. However, there are another type of tissue, which is water, water appearing in the CSF uh, canal. So only one from these tissues appearing bright, so this is representing the T1. If you find two tissues appearing bright like water and fat here in this sequence and water within the nucleus pulposus of the disc in intervertebral discs so now you're dealing with the t2 mri sequence so t1 have only one tissue bright however t2 have two tissues are bright How, how were MRI signals built up? MRI signals built up by three times and one angle and three sequences. This three times and one angle is forming the parameter of MRI by a simple way. According to these parameters, the MRI sequence is formed. There are three times TE, which representing the time to echo. TR representing the time of repetition of sequence and TI is the time of inversions which occurring in the inversion recovery sequence. One angle is written as FA. FA is representing a flip angle and this is representing the angle of changing the magnetizations of the longitudinal magnetizations vector from the main magnetic field strength to the other directions forming an angle due to effect of the RF pulse. So these parameters, when changing it, you can obtain three MRI sequence. One of them is the most common one is the SE, which is called spin echo sequence. And the other one is a gradient echo sequence, which you have in homogeneous, for, in homogeneous field artifacts. And also IR, this is the inversion recovery sequence, which are forming the stir and the flare image. So this is by simple way the parameters which are forming the MRI sequence. Three sequences is the main sequence of MRI. Actually, slight physics. Uh, after the RF excitation pulse stops, we can obtain the two types of the signal. The signal which is called T1 and the other one is called T2. The T1 signal relates to the speed of realignment with the magnetic field. So the more quickly the protons to realign with the main magnetic field have a high signal in the T1. Like fat, which have protons, hydrogen protons in fats have quick realignment. So it have high signal in T1. This is by the physics concept rules. However, in the T2, the signals after stop of RF pulse is defaced and defacing of signal meaning loss of in phasing status and according to the rapidity of this defacing the slower defacing have a greater signal in the t2 meaning high signal in the t2 like water so the hydrogen protons in waters have slower defacing so after stopping of rf pulse so it has high signal in the t2 however fat have a quick to realign after a stop of RF pulse, so it have high signal in the T1. And this imaging is the same image of lumbar spine. However, here we talking about a physical concept. Fat have spin realignment, fast realignment, so it have high signal in the T1, like subcutaneous fat, which appearing here and there, baropharyngeal fat, which appearing bright also here. However, water have low signal, which appearing in the ventricle. In the T2, uh, it depends on the signal is dependent on the uh, rapidity of defacing. So water have slow defacing, uh, so it appearing a high signal in T2, like water in the ventricles uh, in the T2. However, this sequence is showing the CSF appearing intermediate signal the gray matter appearing brighter than the other tissues because the gray matters have uh, high concentrations of the protons. So this sequence is dependent on 
the proton concentration level. So it was, is called the proton density. The proton density is sample is the PET, and the proton density uh, imaging is depend on the high concentrations and density of the protons within the tissue. The gray matter and the muscle have high concentration of these, so it appearing brighter than other tissues. Like here, these are referring to the gray matter or cortex, which appearing high signal compared with the low signal of the white matter uh, here and also the intermediate signal of the ventricle, CSF within the ventricle. Regular spin echo sequence, the, this one from the MRI sequence, the three more common MRI sequence, spin echo sequence, one of them is produced by pairs of radio frequency pulse, 90 degree pulse and 180 degree pulse, like this pulse I have one presentation the talking in physics in details. I will leave the uh, the link of these presentations in descriptions and also here. Uh, so after two excitation pulse, we can uh, get uh, the signal or the echo, and this is which is called the spin echo sequence. Spin echo is called SE, and it build up T1 and the T2 MRI signals like this image of T1 brain. It shows uh, subcutaneous fats appear the bright and the white matter is brighter than the cortex and also the ventricles have CSF which appearing low signal. This is T1 weighted image. T2 weighted image is another image which can be built up due to spin echo sequence. So these two images is called the spin echo sequence. The water or CSF within the ventricles they have high signal in T2 because it have slower dephasing. However, the fat have high signal here because it have quick realignment after a stop of RF bulse. However, the other sequence we told there are three MRI sequence, spin echo, which, you told, uh, which I told you in the previous slide. And this is uh, another one which is called GE sequence, gradient echo sequence. Gradient echo sequence uh, is uh, produced by the single RF bulse in conjunctions with a gradient reversal. So only 90 degree pulse, no need to 180 degree pulse. And we compensate this 180 degree pulse, which reverses the signal by uh, repolarizing or, the, or reversal the gradient uh, uh, coils here over the, the frequency coil. Uh, and uh, this is also, I have one presentation talking about this in details. I will leave the link also of this MRI physics presentation in the description link. Anyway, the gradient echo built up the T2 star MRI signal or gradient echo signal sequence, uh, like this sequence or this one, which is showing the uh, blooming artifact of the uh, iron, like this hemorrhagic status of the intra post traumatic intraventricular and in the basal ganglia, this is low signal is called the blooming artifact in the gradient echo representing uh, uh, abnormality. The third one is the uh, inversion recovery sequence. So we have a spin echo, we have gradient echo, and third one inversion recovery, MRI sequence, our presentation talk today. Uh, IR is dependent depend on the uh, starting our sequence by 180 degree pulse before the regular spin echo sequence 90 and 80, 180 degree pulse. So inversion recovery pulse sequence are a type of MRI used to selectively null the signals for certain tissue like fat and fluids. We null the signal of fat forming the stair image, null the signal of fluids forming the flare image. So this sequence, inversion recovery sequence, build up flare and the stair MRI sequence, like this image in the brain, which is called the flare imaging because the CSF signal is uh, uh, nulled or appearing suppressed. So fluid attenuation, inversion recovery, or flare, this is representing that sequence depending on inversion recovery. However, uh, in this image, the stair image, this is, there are suppressions of the fat uh, in the subcutaneous and also intermuscular as well as in the bone marrow. So it's helping in differentiating of any bruising of the bone marrow because all the bone marrow now appearing dark, any bruises or edema appearing high signal in it. Also, this flare sequence is very important to determine any periventricular abnormal high signal like MS. 
pathology uh, to differentiate it from the high signal of the CSF, which is suppressed already in the flare image. So now with another question, there are three MRI sequences here. Which one of these sequences are not inversion recovery sequence? Actually, it is easy to know that is a sequence of flare image and the flare is representing inversion recovery sequence. However, our question is not inversion recovery sequence, so this one can be excluded because the fluids in the CSF and Sylvian fissures are appearing suppressed here. Uh, and uh, if you check or compare between two images, these two images, you can uh, find the CSF is not suppressed, so there are no flare image here. So we're searching for a stair image. The stair imaging having suppressions of the subcutaneous uh, fat or any fat in the body. So the subcutaneous fat, if you look closely here, it is suppressed or low signal. The subcutaneous fat also in the parapharyngeal spaces is suppressed, comparing with this subcutaneous fat, which is still bright, and also the subcutaneous fat in this image is bright. So this image in the mid, the middle image is representing the not inversion recovery sequence because there are no separation of fluid, no separation of fat. Over here, there are separation of fluid, so it is called the fluid attenuation inversion recovery sequence, and it is one from IR sequence inversion recovery. And this one, there are separation of fat in the parapharyngeal spaces and in the subcutaneous area. Uh, so it is called the stair imaging or short T to in T inversion recovery sequence, short T2 inversion recovery sequence, or short TI inversion recovery sequence, because the TI in the stair image is shorter than the TI in the flare image. So it is called short TI inversion recovery, IR representing inversion recovery. So these two imaging are inversion recovery. However, the middle one is not inversion, and this is the answer for that question. This is actually T2 image because the subcutaneous fat is not suppressed and there are high signal of the fluids appeared here in the CSF within the ventricle. To summarize my presentations, there are three types of sequence, spin echo sequence, gradient echo sequence, and version recovery sequence. It depends on the four parameters mainly. There are a lot, actually, there are a lot of parameters in MRI forming the uh, uh, signal. However, this is the main four parameters which are written in the corner of the image, TR, TE, TI, and FA. TR representing the time of repetition of sequence. And this is uh, according to the TR, we can build up the signal. Uh, as we see here is a flip angle is appearing 90 degree in the IR and in the spin echo sequence. However, it is the 90 degree in the gradient echo sequence according to the increasing the flip angle. The image of the gradient echo uh, appeared near to the T1. If increasing, it appearing near to the T1 uh, uh, like this, 60 to 90, appearing near T1. Uh, image meaning CSF appearing slightly dark. However, the CSF appearing uh, black when the flip angle is smaller, uh, uh, smaller in measurement. TI representing inversion recovery. It all it only appeared in the IR sequence like stair and the flare, and the other sequence is depending on it or parameters to forming the main three sequence in MRI. Thank you very much for your watching and have a nice day.